Well, hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're well. Dave here from Caravantastic. Just gonna do something a little bit different this time around because we've had to change some of our plans in recent weeks. We were hoping that we would be out bringing you more videos of our arrivals and tours around some of the local campsites that we were gonna be visiting. We've had to change plan. And so we're not out in the van again now until next week. When we do go out though, we're off to one of our favorite places at uh, RAF Mildenhall. So there'll be lots of aeroplanes in the next video. So I've been scratching around thinking what we're going to do for a video because I need to get content out. I'm always mindful that I hate putting content out that's pointless and you know kind of irrelevant and a bit boring. So I don't want to do content for the sake of doing content. So I've come up with an idea and it's not a new idea. I know loads of YouTubers do it, but it's just my take on it. And that is um, I'm going to start to put together a series of videos for what I'm calling absolute beginners. Uh, we've all been absolute beginners, caravanners, motorhomers, camper vanners, van lifers, tenters, whatever. We've all been absolute beginners. And uh, I remember when we got our first van, uh, it was very much trial and error and learning by doing, which actually is a really good way of learning from someone who's been in a, a sort of a, a learning and capability uh, profession for a long time and coaching. Uh, the best way to learn anything is by doing it. There's no, no question. But in terms of saving yourselves a lot of time and a lot of trouble, it's always useful to have a, a little bit of instruction or someone give you a point in the right direction, which is what I wanna do with this series of absolute beginner videos. I'm hoping they won't be more than about 10 to 15 minutes long, so fairly quick, and they'll cover a range of different subjects, and they'll just be uh, a series that I'll build over time when I'm trying to film something in between being away in the caravan. Now, disclaimer time, there's nothing new. And you may already know, especially if you're a seasoned um, camper caravanner, you may already know a better way than I'm um, about to demonstrate because I'm, it's not a how-to guide as such, it's just how I do stuff. So I'm not saying this because I do it, it's the right way. It's just what I've learned to do myself over the six years that we've been caravanning. So I hope you find the video useful. This first one, it's going to be all about your water works <laughs> because really important when you get on site uh, one of the first things you do when you've got your caravan all level and pitched and what have you is you're going to have to go and get the water and the electric sorted out so these will all become little videos of their own about the electric and about uh, the, the, the setting up on the pitch and getting it level and all those sorts of things i'm sure they will all become videos in this series of absolute beginners so the one i'm going to do today though is all about water works. So how do we get water into the caravan? Uh, how do we heat it up so we've got nice hot water for washing and showering and doing the dishes? And then how do we get rid of it when we don't want it? So it's water in, normally comes in this end where I'm sat, and water out, which normally comes out towards that end uh, near the washer room. Right, so obviously I'm not on a site, I'm at home, but I want to show you this. This is the, I'll put it on this table actually. This is the, the hose that I've been using to fill the aqua roll. I'll just hold that up for you. Perhaps you can see through it. There we go. Absolutely full of mildewy deposits. Uh, hang on, there we go. Absolutely full. Now, to be fair, I should think most hose pipes in the world that have been used look like that on the inside but because they're not normally transparent you can't see it now we don't use the water in the aqua roll for drinking but i saw that and thought no that's got to go so it's gone and what i've done i'll just bring you around the side of the house here i'd love to say this is my idea but it's not so seen loads of youtubers with these little devices a little bit of waste pipe from B&Q two meter length of that's about three quid not a lot of money and the way it works obviously you'll be at your tap on site you can just put that over the top obviously you can adjust as required and then drop that inside your aqua roll not easy with one hand but I'll show you what I mean inside the aqua roll over the tap and 
works. First time I've tried it. So your average aqua roll will hold 40 litres of water. I'm not going to fill this up because I'm just doing a little test from home. That's working a treat. Right, so once we've got water in, clearly you've got to make life easy for yourself, which is not easy when you've got the camera in your hand. There we go. If you've got an aqua roll, you must have one of these devices for pushing and pulling. I often see the kids getting this job on these campsites, and why not? Why not? Right, so we're on the drive, but we'll just whip this round to the side of the van. Okay, again, not easy when you've got a camera in one hand. This is the, um, the Truma pump, which you connect to the side of the caravan in here. Okay. Now you'll notice it's all curled up. Common um, problem, I suppose, because most people curl these up and put them in their kitchen sink when they're, when they're sort of uh, towing or off-site, and then they end up in this curled position. So if you bend it the opposite way, then you see it gets straightened out quite well. Right, let's see if we can get this in one-handed yeah we can that's good okay so um, we're all connected now one thing you might notice depending on how level the ground is that you are pitched on you may have quite a distance to run from the aqua roll up this pipe before you get into the side of the van the thing about that is sometimes you can get halfway down your water and it starts to feel like it's run out and that's because the pipe's not reaching the bottom so in those instances what I do do I just stand the aqua roll on a couple of blocks I carry four big wooden blocks about, they're not heavy, but I can just raise that up um, by about six or eight inches and that makes a big difference there then in terms of getting all the water out. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not gonna do that. Right, if you're wondering what the noise is, it's just started to rain. Uh, anyhow, we're inside now and uh, we want to pull our water through. So the first thing we'll need to do is um, get the power on and make sure we've got the water pump turned on. Now you might have a slightly different setup to me, but if you've got a Swift van or a Sterling van, you've probably got something that looks like this. So first things first, power on. That's it, we're powered up. There's your battery all connected. Uh, water pump button here. Now when I turn this on in a second, you might hear it fire up. It lives down here underneath. Now it's trying to pump water out at the moment and I haven't got any taps on. So I'm going to turn a tap on now. Let's do that. Now I'm a bit naughty because I already had a bit of water on here. I've already done this a bit earlier. So if you did it for the first time and there's no water in the pipes, then you know that wouldn't flow as freely as that's flowing now. When you turn your tap off, water pump should go off. And that has gone off. Top tip, which um, I must try and follow more of my own top tips here top tip with water pumps I, I think is uh, when you're going out turn it off when you go to bed turn it off two reasons for turning it off when you go to bed one is every now and again it'll just start up on its own for a split second and it'll wake you up <laughs> so that's a good reason for turning it off uh, the other reason for turning it off generally when you're not around the van is if you were to spring a leak anywhere with a pipe it might have got trapped underneath the sink somewhere, perhaps. If you were to spring a leak, um, then with the pump on, it's just gonna pump all of the 40 liters out of the aqua roll, all into the inside of your caravan, which you don't want. Because um, as soon as you start getting water in your van, that's when all your damp starts, okay? So I know that is not rocket science, but it's a good tip. If you can try and get in the habit, when you go out, turn that water pump off. In terms of hot water, uh, how do you get hot water? Well, pretty straightforward, but it may well be different on your van to what we've got here. But um, essentially, this area over here, the Aldi control, that controls our heating system and our water system. Temperature in the caravan at the moment is 15 degrees. We're hooked up to the electric, and this is on the electric, as you can see. If I hit the menu button, then uh, the heating is actually set to come on at 22 degrees. 
which I don't want, so I'll knock that right down. The, uh, the water though is turned off, so it's not heating anything. Uh, so I've just put that on now to heat one or two, depending on how, how quickly uh, you need your hot water. Uh, and I've got it set currently on two kilowatts. You can have this on one, two or three. And of course, it very much depends on whether you're on a 10 amp or a 16 amp electric hookup. We tend to just leave this on two kilowatt, to be fair. What we're always mindful of if we want a 10 amp is if we want to put the kettle on, I just come across here and knock this off like that. Okay, so that's where you get your hot water from. And a bit like a top tip with the water pump, if you're going out, my advice would be turn it off because uh, you really don't want you know anything that might go wrong with the hot water system happening while you're not around the van. So if I just go up to the, uh, the washroom, And again, put the tap on. Our water's pulled through here nicely already. The pump's coming on. That's brilliant. Now where's all the waste water going to? I hear you cry. That's the next thing we're gonna go and look at. If it's coming in one end, it's gonna go out the other somewhere. Let's have a little look. So under your caravan, normally towards the back of the caravan, somewhere in the bedroom area for us, you'll get a couple of uh, waste outlets look like this. One on the left, that's generally coming from your shower room, from the uh, shower and the wash basin in there. And the one on the right normally comes from the kitchen. So we open those up. They do get a bit filthy, these. So every now and again, need a good clean. Believe it or not, they've had a good clean. <laughs> uh, then I get my waste master and literally connect up here like this. And if you follow the hose, that's going to collect all your waste water in here. And of course, when that's full, turn that away and tip it down the grey waste drain on the campsite. Couldn't be easier really and I do like these collapse pipes because they just fold away to nothing and then go in a bag which has got a drawstring on it and they tick away nicely in the front locker out the way. Another key component in your uh, watering kit is a, is a watering can. You've got to carry a watering can. This is a smallish six litre can ideal for what we need. I use this primarily to fill up the Thetford toilet uh, water tank which I'll show you in a second. But also if I'm just dipping into the loo, got to go to reception, I'll probably take it with me just to top it up with fresh water to fill my aqua roll up to save me keep carting that up and down. So got to have a watering can folks. So this is primarily where I use the watering can. This is the uh, back of the caravan, the Thetford toilet. And this is the, uh, the water tank filler. And that's where I haven't got any water in this because I'm not going to use it just yet but I fill the watering can up and I can get, I think it's about seven or eight liters in here. So I would fill this tank up with my watering can. And then when it was full, I'd go and get myself some of my uh, pink chemical, just show you that. Here it is. You can see that I paid 20 quid for a, uh, a five liter drum of Camper eco-friendly pink, toilet pink. And uh, the ratio for this actually, which I've got to be honest with you, I never measure, uh, 75 milliliters of pink to every 10 liters of water. So that uh, that tank roughly wants about 75 milliliters uh, of pink in it. To be honest with you, I just tip a load in. Not too much, but enough. And then what the, that does is it keeps the uh, toilet bowl smelling fresh. So your toilet cassette obviously lives in this compartment here. It's really convenient, it's compact, and it's hassle-free. So you would just pull your toilet cassette out. Now you can hear a little bit of fluid in this, and that's because when we finish using the caravan every time, we always um, we always get the cassette like ready to go. So I've got no work to do on this when I get to the next site. I have noticed some YouTubers put um, an automatic washing um, tablet down into the cassette, and they say it works fine. Never tried it. And probably never will. For the, what this cost me, I'll just use what it's, you know, this is what it's designed to do, isn't it? Not designed to wash your clothes, so I use this stuff. And I'll show you how it works. Right, so once you've done this and the cap's off, okay, it's time to tip this waste away. It can be quite heavy, so be mindful of that. There are two buttons on here. This bottom right button here 
that uh, is a, an air release button because when this fills up with liquid obviously it replaces all of the air that's in the cassette so when it's time to tip if you just tip it it'll either come out very slowly or not come out at all so you need to release this button here and then you'll find that the air will be replaced inside the cassette as the liquid is trying to come out it will pour a lot easier in terms of this trap door here you haven't got to touch that because when you put the cassette in uh, the caravan this door will open automatically on its own okay you ain't got to worry about it when you take the cassette out it will close automatically on its own as well so you haven't got to worry about do i need to open that when i put the cassette in no just exactly as it is slide it in jobs are good once you've emptied normally there's a hose pipe and a tap fill this up again with some clean water to give it a rinse once you've filled it up do not start shaking this thing about vigorously because there are some workings inside here which operate the indicator light on the inside of the caravan which tells you when the toilet is full a little red light comes on you start shaking that about and you could mess about with that and what you don't want is a toilet getting over full so don't shake it about just give it a gentle sw swish a little swish and you'll be fine uh, and then empty it again and when you've done that fill your cap up with the blue tip the blue in the top fasten her up and she's ready to go back in. Couldn't be easier, folks. So if you have been, thanks for watching. And please leave a comment because it really helps this video channel grow when you leave comments and, and do likes and stuff like that. So leave a comment, even if it's another top tip that you've already got that'd be great. Uh, give it a thumbs up because that also really helps. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, really appreciate it if you did. Channel's growing lovely. It's just all happening on its own now, which is nice. The more videos I put out, the more it seems to grow. Uh, but if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell next to it because that will remind you when we release our next video. So if you have been, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.